Welcome, my dear learners, for this course on Engineering Graphics. In this module 4, we are discussing on development of lateral surfaces of solids. We are discussing on parallel line method of development. Moving ahead for the final problem of our discussion on parallel line method of development. So far, we have covered development of prism and cube. We have recruited with cylinder. Let me address cylinder under parallel line method of development. Once we finish parallel line method, I will take up radial line method of development from next lecture. Moving for the last problem on parallel line method of development, we have problem number 5 states that draw the development of the lateral surface of the truncated vertical cylinder 40 mm in diameter of base and height 50 mm. The truncated flat surface of the cylinder bisects the axis at 60 degrees to fit. We have a vertical cylinder and the development is a truncation. As we already know, if cutting plane is inclined at certain angle to the base or to horizontal plane, we will get truncation. If cutting plane is parallel to the base or to the horizontal plane, we will get thrust. Here cutting plane is inclined at an angle of 60 degrees to axis, which means it is inclined at 30 degrees to base or to horizontal plane. So therefore we are getting truncated cylinder. First let us draw the front and top view of the given problem. The top view of the cylinder is a circle of radius 20 millimeters. So come let us draw top and front view of this cylinder first. That is If we draw a reference xy line, this will be vertical plane, this will be horizontal plane. We are using first angle projection, the front view of a cylinder will be rectangle, the top view will be circle. Now measuring 20 mm radius, let us draw the top view of this cylinder. Draw the top view of this cylinder. The top view of this cylinder is a circle of radius 20 millimeters drawn. Now, for the development of this given problem, either I can divide this cylinder into 12 equal parts or I can divide it into 8 equal parts. If I divide it into 8 equal parts, then solution will become easier. If you want more accurate result, divide the cylinder into 12 equal parts. That is, divide this 360 degree into 30 degrees each, you will get 12 sections. I will divide it into 45 degrees, therefore I will get 8 sections. So 8 sections is enough, so therefore I will go, go with 8 sections. That is, I divide this into 8 equal halves at 45 degrees. That is, if you use 30 degrees, you will get 12 equal halves. That will give you more accurate answer. I will go with 8 equal halves for the moment. That is, I will take angle at 45 degree at the top as well as at the bottom 45 degrees so this will give us 8 points on the circumference of the cylinder So I got 8 points, let me mark it as A, A1, C, C1, D, D1, E, E1, F, F1, G, G1 and finally H, H1. Now taking the vertical projection. To lay down the cylinder, the front view of a cylinder will be a rectangle. So take the projection.
Now we know height of the cylinder. The height of the cylinder is 50 millimeters given. So therefore, draw the height of the cylinder as 50 mm, which is specified. So I draw the cylinder of height 50 mm and base. is a circle of radius 20 millimeters. So this diameter will be 40. This diameter will be 40. So diameter of 40 mm and the cylinder height is given as 50 height is 50 mm correct done now lay down smooth lines of this which is necessary to mark the points Now this is the front view of the cylinder which is a rectangle of dimension 50 mm cross 40 mm and top view is a circle of diameter 40 mm. 40 mm. Now marking the vertical lines we have A1 dash, A dash, here I will get B1 dash is visible whereas H1 dash is invisible, here I will get B dash, H dash, here C1 dash is visible, G1 dash is invisible, C dash, G dash, here D1 dash is visible, F1 dash is invisible, here we get D dash, F dash, finally we have E1 dash, E dash. Done. So this completes all the marking. Now axis O O1 is also invisible for us. Here we have O1 dash O dash. Now cutting plane bisects the axis. So overall height of the axis is 50 mm. Bisects means it will divide into 25 25. So mark 25 mm from the base or from the apex. Mark 25 mm. Take it as a reference. So we'll take this as a reference. So this is 25 millimeters because the cutting plane bisects the axis. Now, if you carefully observe, it is making 60 degrees to it. It means axis. So it is not given inclination with respect to horizontal plane, it is given inclination with respect to axis. So if it is inclined 60 degrees to axis, then 90 minus 60 is 30, it is inclined at 30 degrees to base or for the horizontal plane. So if I mark 60 degrees to axis, 60 degrees to axis or 30 degrees to base. So you'll get a cutting plane like this. Kindly make a note, he has given the inclination with respect to axis. Now we can use different chalk to mark this. So mark the cutting plane, it is making an angle of 30 degrees to base or 60 degrees to axis. So I will get, this will be the required development of the cylinder. Now mark the points, the cutting plane is not intervening the base, neither at the bottom or at the apex. Faces. So therefore, I can use only parallel lines to complete the development. First you mark the points. On A we have 1 dash, on B it is 2 dash, on C it is 3 dash, on D it is 4 dash, on E it is 5 dash. Then F is 6 dash, G is 7 and H is 8. For more accuracy, you can also do it by 
12 points. We will get 12 points if you divide this into 30 degrees each. Now, in order to transfer these points, first let me unfold this cylinder. If I unfold this cylinder from, cutting, from point A1 dash, cutting it and unfolding it, I will get a rectangle of dimension pi d cross height. Correct? Circumference cross height. So it is circumference will be pi times diameter. Diameter is 40 mm. 40 into 3.1415 believes us 125.7 approximately. So draw a line for 125.7. First let me unfold this cylinder. The dimension of the cylinder will become 125.7 millimeters. That is, I will get 125.7 and mark 125.7 that is pi which is equal to 125.7 this dimension is pi times the diameter which is pi times 40 which is nothing but 125.7 m. Now this circumference we are divided into 8 equilabs, so therefore I should divide this into 8 equilabs. So 125.7 by 8 is very very difficult to divide into 8 equilabs, so therefore what I will do is that I will draw an orbital line at an angle of 30 degrees, cut it to the 8 equilabs and connect and draw parallel lines, I will get 8 equal divisions for 125.7. This is people already know the basics. Let me use that. Draw an arbitrary line for an angle of 30 degrees. V dot by 30, at any convenient angle, you draw a line. You draw a line at any convenient angle and divide this into 8 halves. Length might be anything. It need not be fixed for any arbitrary length. You divide into 8, pa eight parts. Let me take bit shorter length. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The length is also arbitrary, angle is also arbitrary. For an arbitrary angle, draw a line. For an arbitrary length, take 8 divisions. Connect. You should connect from the first point and also connect the 8 divisions to final point. Done. Now drawing parallels, I will get 8 equal divisions of some dimension. The sum will lead us 125.7. Now draw parallel to this one, like this. Draw parallels. So this will use us 8 equal divisions. I got 8 equal divisions. Now I can mark the vertical height. Vertical height is 50 mm. Mark the vertical height. Done. Now connect this. Connecting the top. Done. Connected. Now I mark this as A1A. Next B one B. Next C one C. B one B. E one E. 
then f one f g one g then h one h the first and last should be the same because when I fold it, I will get overlapping of A on E. Now, just transfer the points 1 dash to 8 dash by drawing parallels. That is, we have 1 dash. So, this 1 dash is on A. So, transfer it. I transferred this will become point one. 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 Next you transfer two and eight. Two is for B, eight is for H. So transfer two and eight. Two is for B and eight is for H. Two is for B and eight is for H. 8 is for H, 2 is for B. Next we have 3 and 7. 3 is for C, 7 is for G. 3 is for C and 7 is for G. 3 is for C, 7 is for G. So this is 7 and this is 3. Next we have 4 and 6. 4 is for D. 6 is for F. 4 is for D. Transfer it for D. And 6 is for F. X in this field. F. This will become 0.6. This will become 0.4. So finally we have 0.5 on E. Transfer 0.5 to E. Transfer it to E. We will get 0.5. So I transfer. Now, the careful observation you should make that is before moving the careful observation let me mark the angle of inclination he has given it is bisecting at an angle of 60 degrees to axis and for base the remaining will be 30 degrees done now for cylinder if you observe cylinder does not contain any sharp edges cylinder has only smooth surface so therefore whatever points we have marked should be Connected by using smooth curve. Don't draw any sharp lines because cylinder never contain any sharp edges. It is a smooth surface. So I should generate a smooth surface for which I should connect these points by using smooth curve. Let me use different chalk for that. So if I draw smooth curve from 1 to connect to 2. 3, we have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 1. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 1 and at the bottom. Connect the bottom. Now we have sharp horizontal bottom. We connect this. This is the circumference of this cylinder. Done. So this is the development of cylinder. This is the development what is required for us. The bottom face of the cylinder. The top face is cut out, and if you fold it by giving proper alliances and connect it by using bending, bracing or soldering if you do it in a sheet metal we will get the cylinder of this shape with the front view the top face will be removed so this is how you should solve development problems on cylinder thereby we have completed parallel method of development under which we have addressed development of prism development of cube and finally development of cylinder that's all from this lecture thank you all